Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's class. My name is uh, Wafula Joshua. I teach at Regional College, Commonwealth House, Moy Avenue, fifth floor. To reach us, the contact will be shared below the video. You can also follow us on social media, Regional College, and you, so, so that you, you are able to be updated in all our activities. We offer both Kasne neck hospitality courses, foreign languages. Welcome, welcome, we do this together. Now, uh, today I'll tackle a very simple and uh, simple topic, which is very notorious in the exam, especially for those who are doing advanced financial management for CPA section five and any other person doing some international finance or uh, any finance paper, the concept you're going to handle today might be very much helpful to you. And uh, it's on financing decisions. I want us to say something on uh, special topics. Special topics in financing. Special topics in financing. And to be, to be specific, I want to talk about the geared geared and ungeared better. Geared and ungeared better. And we know that we always use the concept of Hamada model. Hamada model. When you are comparing, when, when, uh, when you are comparing the, bet, the geared and ungeared farm, a geared farm is a farm that has debt in its capital structure and geared farm has no debt in its capital structure. It's all equity financed. The better factor for a farm without debt is always lower than the better factor for a farm with debt because of the two concepts. If I'm, if I'm levered, I have both systematic risk and unsystematic risk. Sorry, systematic risk and financial risk because of debt. But if I'm unlevered, I only have the systematic risk. I only have the systematic risk. And for that reason, the, the, better, the better factor, the measure of risk of a lever, of unlevered farm is always lower than the better factor of a levered farm because of the two sets of risk. Now, if you've been given the better of a levered farm, if you've been given the better of a levered farm, and in a capital structure there is no debt, we, need, we use the Hamada formula to try and get the unlevered better. And the Hamada formula says that to get the equity better, that is the better of, an, uh, the, better of the levered farm, we use the asset better, which is the better of unlevered farm, the, be the farm without debt. We multiply by the value of equity plus after tax value of debt, we divide by value of equity. The concept was tested in the in the in the May 2021 May 2021 question four May 2021 question four part C. I want us to approach uh, to, uh, to look at that question, see how far we can we can go with it. We are told that so we are having May 2021 advanced financial management. May 2021, Advanced Financial Management, question 4C. We are told that Makazi Limited's current earnings per share is six shillings. The current earnings per share, from the current earnings per share, get the current year's dividends, the D naught. The firm has in issue 50 million ordinary shares, which have a par value of 20 shillings each. The firm's total revenue and capital reserves amount to 500 million, the company has an asset beta of 0 0.9 and retention ratio of 60%. Now I've been given the asset beta, the ungeared beta, the ungeared beta. Let's continue and see. The management of Makazi Limited intends to undertake financial reconstruction, which will result in a debt to equity ratio of zero uh, change from 0 0.45 to 0 0.2. That basically means that currently we have debt. And as long as we have debt, we cannot use the asset better. We need the equity better. Currently, debt to equity ratio is 0 0.45, meaning when debt is 0 0.5, equity is 1. 
with the new policy, it will change from 0 0.2, 0 0.45 to 0 0.2, meaning with the new restructuring, the debt will be 0 0.2 when equity is 1. So in all scenarios, there is debt. And if there is, no, if there is debt, I need the equity better, I don't need the asset better. There was a catch there. We, needed, we didn't need the asset better as, have, as has been provided in the question, but we needed the equity better. The Hamada formula will come into place. RF is 8%, expected return of a market portfolio is 18%, tax rate is 30%. The firm's return on equity before and after financial reconstruction will remain unchanged. Evaluate the impact of the financial reconstruction on the firm's share price. The firm's share price. Now, we know that the share price, the share price, which is like our PO, is always equals to D naught into 1 plus G over KE minus G. So the question that we are being asked is, the question that we are being asked is, how does the how does the reconstruction affect the share price? So we need to know, we need to compare the share price before reconstruction with the share price after reconstruction. Share price before reconstruction with the share price after reconstruction. So let us get the variables. Let us get the variables. Our DO, that is like our current year's dividends, the earnings per share from, what, from the information that we have, the earnings per share is six shillings and the payout ratio, when, when we are retaining 60%, we are paying 40%. So our dividends becomes 40% of six shillings. 40% of six shillings, that is 2.4. That is 2.4. So 40% of six, that is 2.4. I'm using the calc also. Uh, our cost of equity will have to be, we use the security market line, the CAPEM, which is RF plus RM minus RF times the beta. Now, the beta factor that we need to use is not the asset beta. We need to get the equity beta. We need to get the equity beta. So how do we get the equity beta? We are going to get the equity better by applying the Hamada formula, which is the asset better times the value of equity plus value of debt adjusted for tax divided by value of equity. So let us deal with the uh, before, before reconstruction. Before reconstruction. Now, as far as you are concerned, before reconstruction, let us see what is happening. We've been told that we've been told that the management of Makazi intends to undertake a financial reconstruction, which will result in a debt to equity ratio change from. So currently, before our debt to equity is 0 0.45, meaning the value of debt is 0 0.45. The value of equity is one. So you have the value of equity, have the value of debt. Asset beta, we've been given up there. Our asset beta is 0 0.9, 0 0.9. So therefore, I can get my equity beta, which equals to 0 0.9 times the value of equity is one plus 0 0.45. We are just for tax. Tax rate we are told is 30%, divide by one. We can get that one. When I use the calculator, we are having 1 plus 0.45 times 0.7. So 1.45 times 0.7, sorry. So times 0.9, that is 1.184. That is before reconstruction. Then after reconstruction, 
after reconstruction, the value of debt. After reconstruction, the value of debt will be 0 0.2. It's debt to equity ratio. So value of debt is 0 0.2. Value of equity is 1. So you can get our equity beta. Asset beta was 0 0.9 times the value of equity. The value of equity of 1 times 0 0.2. We adjust for tax. We divide by 1. So we get our equity beta there. So 1 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.7 times 0.9. This is 1 plus, sorry. So it is 1 plus 0 0.2 times 0 0.7, then times 0 0.9, 1.026. So therefore, before reconstruction, our KE equals to our risk-free rate of return. The risk-free rate of return from the question you are having 8%. The expected return on the market is 18 minus 8 times the beta of 1.184. We get our cost of equity. Then after reconstruction, our KE equals to RF, which is 8. RM is 18 minus 8 times the beta of 1.026. So we get our KE. We get our KE there. So this one is uh, 10 times 1.184 plus 8, 19.84%. Then this other side, 10 times 1.026 plus 8, 18.26%. 18 18 the last thing that is remaining for us to be able to get our value of the firm, we already have our dividends, we have our KE, we now need to get our G. And we know that the growth rate, we can use the concept of the return on equity times the retention ratio. Return on equity times retention ratio. Return on equity is the profit after tax over equity. Profit after tax over equity from the question. Profit after tax is simply the earnings per share times the number of shares. The profit of one share is the earnings per share. You multiply by the number of shares to get the earnings per share. So our earnings per share equals to, so part, profit after tax equals to six times the number of shares that the company had, 50 million. 50 million. And the value, on the value of equity, in the balance sheet, the equity is the ordinary share capital and the reserves. Ordinary share capital, we are having 50 million shares with the par value. Par value per share, are we seeing 20 somewhere? 20 shillings, that is the par value. And the, the capital, the revenue and capital reserves is 500. So that gives us the value of equity. So we are having 6 times 50, 300 million. That is our profit after tax. And the value of equity, we are having 50 times 20 plus 500. That is 1,500. 1,500. So therefore, therefore, to get our G, to get our G, allow me to put this one here, to get our growth rate, our return on equity, Profit after tax is 300 million. 300 million over 1500. So 
So 300 over 1500, that is 0.2. And our retention ratio, when you are paying out 60%, uh, the retention ratio we have, we've been given directly there, the retention ratio is 60%. So 60%, that is 0 0.6. Now we have all the variables that we needed here. Let us now summarize them up here under the current and under after and before reconstruction. So here we have before and we have after. Before reconstruction, I have the DO, which we got is 2.4. The DO is also 2.4. We have our G. Our G, sorry guys, our growth rate now becomes the return on equity 0.2 times the retention ratio of 0 0.6 this is 0 0.12. So our G is 0 0.12 or 12%. G is also 0 0.12. Our KE, before reconstruction, KE was 19. 19.84%, that is 0 0.1984. 0 0.1984. And after, we are having 18 our KE is 18.26%. That is 0 0.1826. Now, let us get the PO. From our formula, PO was DO into 1 plus G over KE minus G. So we are having our DO of 2.4 Growing at 12%, 1 plus 0 0.12, divided by 0 0.1984 minus 0 0.12. Then, of course, after the reconstruction, we are having our PO, which would be DO is 2.4, still growing at 12%. The cost of equity is 0 0.1826 minus 0 0.12. So if we use the calculator, 2.4 times 1.12 divided by 0.1984 minus 0.12. So we're having shillings 34, Kenya shillings 34.29. Then this other side, we're having Kenya shillings, 42.94. 42.94. So that basically means that the effect, the effect of financial reconstruction to the value of the farm. We appreciate that the value of the share, the value per share, the farm's share price is increasing from 34.29 to 42.94. If somebody would have asked you advice on whether reconstruction is viable. We could comfortably tell them that yes, reconstruction is very viable because it is increasing the value of the shares. So that is what was expected of us to handle in that question. Again, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on some of the topics or some of the items that you are going to share. And also invite your friends, share on your, on your social media group so that your friends can also benefit from these services that we are that we are giving for you are giving to you to enable you prepare for your exams current exams and the future exams thank you so much